Uh, hi, LLD. How would you handle the soulless aspects of a job where you are asked, uh, where you are asked to do? I'm assuming asked to do things that feel slightly less than your moral standard for pushing an add-on purchase you know they don't need. Um, I mean, I generally ignored whatever yeah. spits we were offered back when I was at NCIX or, you know, what we were told to push. And that got me promoted uh, because my customers loved that they got good stuff that was really good and uh, at a fair price. I can't promise that it would work that way at every company. I think at a lot of companies that would just get you fired. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it all kind of it all come kind of comes. And look, I'm not going to pass some kind of moral judgment and say, well, then you should stand up and you should, uh, you know, hand in your resignation or you are less of a man. Like that's that's ridiculous. I understand that everybody's got to eat. And at the end of the day, um, business is always what it is. Um, if there is if there's no margin in desktop PCs, uh, your your store is going to tell you, hey, try to attach a printer because there's good margin in that. And if all you ever did was sell desktop PCs with no printers, um, the store would ultimately go out of business. Um, you know, you could try to you could you could try to talk to management and say, hey, maybe we should charge more for PCs, and then they would say, well, um, good luck with that. The store down the street has lower advertised prices on their PCs and their reps do a really great job of upselling monster HDMI cables or whatever the, you know, modern equivalent of that is. And uh, if we aren't in business, they're going to be the only ones left. So I guess the ends justify the means. I guess all I'm trying to say is this is clearly shades of gray and I'm not here to pass any kind of moral judgment. Um, you know, I always found that for me, uh, I was able to create better relationships with my customers by educating them, um, helping point them in the right direction, regardless of what corporate had to say about it. But NCIX just wasn't organized enough to discipline anyone for not getting with the program when it came to pushing products. So I don't know what to tell you. Uh, yeah. When I used to do sales at Best Buy before I got into the Geek Squad side of things, um, I would actually sell a lot of stuff because um, I knew what I was talking about, I guess. Um, and I... I would usually avoid upselling things in general, but you also can't ignore that people might want those things. So making them aware that they're available is not a bad idea. Like I wouldn't push someone to buy a, uh, a, a case for their laptop, like a carrying case or a, a backpack, backpack with a sleeve for the laptop or whatever, but I would make sure they knew that we had them. Yeah, education. Yeah. Education is key. Yeah. Um, and you know, because like people might actually be kind of pissed like I, I would you would you would hear of people that would come back in and be like I like scratched whatever and who knows if this yeah. is real or not but they'd be like oh I scratched my thing I'm like upset about this and then someone would be like well you could have bought a case and they'd be like well well no one told me yeah yeah I mean that's something like where like if you uh if you tell someone if you ask someone hey do you want Apple Care?" and they're like no then you might go okay that's totally cool um would you consider a case I think that's a very reasonable way to to offer and attach without being a pushy jerk about it, right? It's it's all in the presentation too. You can you can present options. I think that's a really good point, without you know cramming them down someone's throat. And you might not like said thing, but the customer might, and they might still want to buy it. Yeah, um, just so, educate them. Yeah, and there's there are certain lines that I didn't want to cross in regards to things that we sold that I thought were really stupid or absurdly overpriced or whatever. And I'm not necessarily suggesting this, but I do remember one time I walked into the NCX Langley store, still wearing my Best Buy stuff. And one of the NCX people behind the desk asked me if I was the person that kept sending customers there. Um, because I was, um, and that there was just, there was certain things that we would sell that would be at Best Buy at that time that were really overpriced and really bad. And it's not that I didn't think like, this is not actually one of the examples, but I'm going to use printers as an example. Sure. It's not that I think printers are a bad idea for the customer. I just think we have terrible ones yeah. that are going to break, are bad, and are overpriced. So I would 
send them somewhere else in that case. Well, cables were a classic one that people would say. Like, I, I worked at an NCIX that was near a Best Buy, and we would often have people walking through the door looking for a cable that wasn't stupidly overpriced. Power cables, yeah, yeah. were, like, insanely expensive, and oh, people yeah, sure. would you want a $25 cables? C13 power yeah, cable? Like, like, are you kidding no? me? Yeah. I you mean the one that comes for, free with my rice cooker? Like, Yeah, yeah. I would send people over for power and HDMI all the time. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. But, like... Other stuff like I, I I had a sale with some dude, I I broke like what we needed to sell for the entire weekend to one person on like a Friday, um because they came in looking for like a laptop for themselves ended up deciding to like outfit their whole office, and got like software packages for all of them wow. got all this other kind of stuff because he was like excited because I told him actual things about actual laptops that like no salesperson had told him before. Um, and then he was like asking about like, oh, I, I need a solution for this thing. And I'm yeah. like, well, you can buy like soft that. software. And he's just like brain explode and end up spending tons of money. I didn't like upsell him. Yeah. I just made sure he knew. And I understand there are, there's a lot of gray in there, but like, I don't know. He had a great experience and left very happy. Like I didn't, I didn't push it when he was paying for it. He knew exactly how much it was going to be. He wasn't surprised by the bill. That's the line, right? If someone else talked to this person and was knowledgeable and gave an assessment of how they were treated and the deal they got, would they still be happy with how you treated them yeah. and the deal they got? Yeah. If the answer is yes, you're good. I've left a store spending more than I planned on and been happy. stoked about it. Yep. And I'm a very cheap person. Yep. I, I spent a fortune on my mattress. Yeah. And I'm thrilled about it yeah. because I have never had an experience like that buying anything ever. Oh, he told me all about it and they're gone now and I'm sad. Yeah. Like Buddy literally like took two pieces of the same foam and like got down on hands and knees while we were lying on this layered foam mattress and was like, no, that's slightly out of alignment. We actually need to adjust like this middle layer and like got this one and was like, no, with this one flipped over. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Like, like calibrated, uh, the two sides of mine and Yvonne's mattress to each of our bodies. Like it was crazy. Yeah. Um, cost a fortune. Actually, you know what? Not even that much more compared to going and buying one of the S brands uh from like sleep country or whatever uh super 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 happy unfortunately no i don't have a name it was a it was a factory in on the north shore in vancouver that no longer appears to exist and that kind of makes sense because uh buddy who helped us was uh on the elderly side of things and uh, i think they like we chatted with him for like an hour and a half or something like that like he was he wanted to transition to his kids running it but hey maybe that didn't work out for whatever reason so they don't uh, seem to be there anymore. Gert, yeah, the, which is sad because I actually, I tried to call them to go and just got a, a no no line. Uh, Gertcher said, not advocating for commission-based sales, but there is little incentive for a Best Buy employee to upsell as there is no commission-based sales there. So Luke did all that out of passion and not for money. Yeah, I made nothing from it. Like, I think genuinely you can still nothing. get spiffs, can't you? I didn't get anything. I don't know. All. I've never worked at Best Buy. At that time, I got nothing. I, th I think they have spiffs. It was so bad that I remember we had, uh, for like something that we did, I don't remember what, we had like a burger day and they like ran out of buns. Okay. And the, the GM of the store refused to like buy more buns. So I walked to Walmart on my break and bought buns with my own money to like feed people at the store. Okay. Like it, they didn't care about us at all. Not even slightly. But I liked my job. I liked the people in my departments right. that I worked with. The computer sales department and the geese squad department were cool. Um, I didn't like like almost anyone else in the store. Customer support was cool, actually. The people at the front, customer support. Um, and yeah. People are saying no, no spiffs in their time there. So. Yeah. Nope, not okay. a thing. Wow. Yeah. yeah, there's like actually nothing. That's kind of stupid. No wonder nobody walks up to you to help you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah. yeah.
Uh, AT Shield 934 in Float Plane Chat says, As a former blue shirt, I can tell you that some major brands, Samsung and LG, will release specific models of TVs just for the holiday season. You can usually tell by the model number. Samsung's normal naming scheme is AAXX00 for their sub QLED TVs. Um, for holiday TVs, this gets a little bit weird, like uh, letter, letter, okay, whatever, some different thing. Okay. They're effectively the same TV, but one has an MSRP of 650 and the other has an MSRP of 850 with a sale of $300 off. Yeah, that's, that's not quite what they were asking about before, where they were asking if there's like a different quality, but yes, that is 100% something that exists, is slightly different model numbers, even from one chain to another to make it much more difficult to um, cross shop and price compare around this time of year. Yeah. Um, that's even, even a, a, a away from the holiday season or like the shopping season, it's pretty common to see slightly different part numbers at a Best Buy and at a Costco and on it, you know the, the, the manufacturer website uh, so that you are, are eliminating uh, price matching requests because your retailers are going to get on you if they're getting a bunch of price match requests from their competitors who might have a better price whereas you can kind of slip that stuff under the radar if no customers flag it and it doesn't show up as like yeah we got like 300 like it would happen at ncix uh we we had monitoring for this where we'd get like 50 price match requests for something and the the first thing we would do is we'd call up the brand be like yo what the fuck whoops, I got the timing wrong on that, is going on with, with this price. Why do they have better pricing than us? How are they doing this deal? Because everyone's buying from the same person. Like, okay, like Ben Q, for example, had one rep in yeah. the entire country. So if someone's got a Ben Q monitor for $50 cheaper than us, then who sold it to them? Ben Q, obviously. So who are we going to call and yell at about it? Because we've got a warehouse full of these monitors that are now not moving, or worse yet, moving at a loss because our stupid competitor has a better price than us. Like that's the, that's the dynamic at play, right? Yeah. 